Hello, my name's Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, and I'm here today with... Kevin Nichols. I am the Episcopal Bishop of Bethlehem. Great. Well, welcome, Kevin. Thank you. We are here at the Mother Church of the Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, and this is one of the very first churches that was founded here to bring the Anglican tradition into this part of Pennsylvania, founded in 1722. This is a historic parish, but it's not too far from St. Thomas in Morgantown, just four miles down the road is where your diocese begins. Yeah. So this is a great place for us to have a meeting and to create a video for our convention. Kevin, I know that you have been on sabbatical, as have I, and I heard that you've taken up painting. Yes, is that uh, right? Well, sort of. Um, so I had grand uh, ambitions about what sabbatical would look like and travel plans. I even bought this uh, really fancy oil painting set. Mm -hmm. I was going to start to oil paint and, and paint, you know, all of the churches of the diocese grand plans, of course. Well, <laughs> things shifted. Um, uh, illness in our family and, and a need to stay closer to home uh, led me to paint the entire exterior of my home. Oh. So it was painting of a different sort, but ultimately that is sometimes what life is like. Um, what color? It is, a, it is called New Hope. Yeah. Cool. New Hope. Uh, now, I heard that while on sabbatical, you not only hiked, um, but including your hiking, you built like a, a David Thoreau kind of hermitage <laughs> where you now are centering and growing deeper in your faith. Is that true? That's true. I hiked about 15% of yes. the Appalachian Trail this summer, so I have some left to go. And also, I did. I built a little micro cabin. It's called Viraditas, which mm -hmm. means the greening of God. It's a Hildegard of Bingen um, phrase that she coined. And it's been a great space for me to sit and enjoy um, just solitude and to be refreshed in prayer. Mm. So when I wasn't hiking, I was in my own backyard. Mm. Well, Audrey, um... I have an image that um, remains with me, and it was a clergy gathering in the, in, uh, the Diocese of Central Pennsylvania that I attended uh, back in May, it seems like forever, but maybe mm -hmm. uh, almost two years ago, and, and um, you kind of pulled me aside, and we were kind of in the back of the room, we were overlooking the clergy who were gathered there, and you, you said to me, I, I really love these people. Mm. And... Um, and I was so taken by that moment. And oftentimes, um, I find myself as I'm driving away from a visitation, uh, sometimes the drive there has got anxiety, but the drive home is always filled with this sense of also either feeling beloved or feeling so grateful uh, for the people that we're called uh, and gifted to serve. And um, it just, it, it constantly reminds me that, um, you know, here we, here we were, um, two folk who kind of grew up 15 minutes apart in Connecticut, who right. wouldn't believe it, but have now fallen in love with Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and um, the folk who, who serve and minister in our churches. It's, it's really powerful for me. Yeah. Well, I remember at one of our early reunification discernment meetings when you, we were all telling a story about how we had become um, found the Episcopal Church, I guess. And your story morphed a little bit into saying um, how much you and Patty really, you never thought that you were going to leave New Hampshire and find any place like New Hampshire, but that now you really felt at home here, that yeah. this was your home. And so I think both of us have, we've bonded pretty well, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's a testament to the people that we serve as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I offer this because um, we, we also are deeply committed and have a strong sense that the future of this diocese is not about us. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily about where we're called, um, but it's, it's really about where God is leading us and guiding us in this moment. And maybe you could just say a few words about how you, how you see the Episcopacy in this moment, in this emerging moment, as we imagine the possibility of reunification. Mm -hmm. 
I think for a long time we've lived in a one model of the Episcopate and that the church today is calling us to imagine new ways, not just of being individual parochial entities or parishes or, or congregations. Uh, all of our congregations know that, that things are changing and we're being called to, to think of new ways to be God's presence in our communities. But also we are being called. Um, we can't be the bishops of 50 or 75 or 100 or 200 years ago. We need to also um, reimagine what it is that we're called to do. And so one of the um, constants, however, the baby that I don't want to throw out with the bathwater is that I think that one of the responsibilities of the bishop is to serve the congregations. Yeah. And so for me, I'm committed to continuing to support uh, whether our diocese remain separate or whether we reunify, that the primary emphasis for the bishop and the bishop's staff is to support the congregations in their own work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I, think, um, I think along those lines, as we continue to walk together, as we brought together the reunification team, and um, a couple of themes have come forward. One is this this massive geography or new massive geography, mm -hmm. the sense of size. And um, I think in our conversations, we've talked about how really that is kind of a secondary issue, is the primary issue um, is really supporting folk on the ground and bringing ministry resources to people who, who most need it. And, and our congregations are the entities that know their community and know the folk that need it. So one of the things that I think is exciting about the possibility of this model is to be able to share resources um, with our congregations, to increase granting resources that right. can be provided where we're doing some of the best work. Um, and, and that's really exciting mm -hmm. for me, and I think exciting for our future. Yes, one of the things that I keep saying is the discernment work that we are doing and our, our presentation, our further presentation will reveal this to you, I hope, is to try to understand whether one administrative unit, which is basically what we are, yeah. one administrative unit would serve better than two uh, in order to open up those resources for the congregations, because all of you are doing the work. You're doing God's work in your congregations, and that's something that we don't want to see discontinued, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. The presentation that you're about to hear will reflect the data that we've collected over the last year as a reunification discernment committee and some of the analysis that we're doing of that. Today, we're not voting on whether to reunify or not as much as we are continuing the exploration. And I would say the prayerful exploration of who we are and what we have to offer each other for God's mission. And so we invite you today to listen with open hearts as we work together to chart our future. Thank you, Audrey. And to all of you who are listening this day, just know of our love and our gratitude as you walk together with us in discernment. <laughs>